Hi, you guys. How are you? Happy Thursday. I'm going to give you seven steps to stop binge eating and overeating right now. These are my favorite steps that I've accumulated over the years. I used to do this. I used to be a heavy restrictor and then in direct response to that serious, severe restriction, I went to binge eating or like I call last supper eating, which is basically when you think that you're going to be great tomorrow, you're going to have, you're going to be on your diet tomorrow and you're going to start tomorrow so that today, the last supper, you're going to at, eat everything in, in sight, pretty much everything that you are not going to be allowing yourself tomorrow on the diet. So this is a cycle that often perpetuates and is often a direct response to restriction. So I first want to just gently remind you and let you know Binge eating is not your fault. If you are in a binge or if you are noticing that you are overeating throughout your meals, it is not your fault, okay? You are, there's nothing wrong with you. You're not broken, okay? This is, this is something that happens to people because of diet culture, because we are so inundated with the shame and the guilt and, and feelings of worthlessness because we're not a certain size or we're not a certain body weight or a shape that we would like to be because society says that we have to be that to be beautiful, right? So just know that if you are down on yourself or getting down on yourself or beating yourself up because of what you ate or how much you ate, don't. <laughs> be gentle with yourself. This is the time that you need to actually forgive yourself and understand that this is a problem that can be solved and we can and I can help you do that. I can help you do that directly, um, individually, or simply just by if you listen, if you're listening in right here. If you're listening, please let me know. I would love to hear from you. Let me know in the comments below if you're on the replay. I love my replay people. Please let's hashtag replay um, and I'll let you know that you're here. Or I'll know that you're here. <laughs> so yeah, this is a this is kind of a heavy topic, right? Binge eating is 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 a heavy topic. I used to be a binge eater. I used to, you know, like I said, just go on severe diets and then severe binges, and it was just kind of like one end of the pendulum and then the next end of the pendulum, and it was feeling to me like that was the only way I was ever going that I was ever going to to be, to function. I couldn't find a way out. And so I'm here to tell you that I did find a way out and I wrote it down and I wrote it and I've made a blueprint to help you beat that forever so that you don't have to go through what I went through for years. You can actually overcome these in just a matter of weeks. There is a thing called brain plasticity, which is basically your brain is, is full of all these, um, neurons that can be rewired if you create new neural pathways that your brain remembers. So all it is is just rehabit formation. Instead of going on the, the traditional habit loop that you may be doing, which is, okay, I'm really stressed out, I'm going to go to the fridge, or okay, I'm really freaked out or stressed out or angry at my loved one, I'm going to go to the cupboards. Or Instead of doing those things, there's ways and there's tips and there's lots of self-work and, and actualization that you can do and patterns that you can rewrite so that you don't have those same habit loops coming up. So that is one way. Okay, but my seven main steps to stop binge eating right now that you can implement today if this is you at all. Number one is to stop dieting, okay? This is... I know I say this a lot, I say this all over my content, but this is for real. Like, if you keep dieting, if you keep on a strict diet and a restriction plan, or you're only allowed like 12 things in your diet meal plan, your brain is going to think about all the other things that you're not allowing yourself, and there, and it's going to want to, the, to have those a lot more, right? Does that make sense? Because when your brain is just allowing all of the things and you allow your brain to just like settle in and be like, oh yeah, the cake is over there, the pretzels are over here, the apples are over here, the salad's here. All of it's neutral, all of it's normal, all of it's allowed. 
then you can just relax and your brain doesn't have to be like, oh my God, I want the cake. Or, oh my God, I want the pretzels because I'm not allowing the pretzels for six months and I really want them right now. Like that kind of anxiety eases and calms down and chills out, which is what you want, right? So you can, you know, either, you have two choices. Either stay dieting, which will ultimately lead to binge eating almost 100% of the time or overeating because you're restricting so much. Your brain is going to be like, no, but I want this and I want that and I want this. And you're going to be thinking about it. When you don't think about it, when you allow yourself permission to eat all of the things and you're not on a diet, you're just on a, on a, you know, your regular eating plan. You don't have to think about food so much. You don't have to think about what you're not allowing yourself because you are allowing yourself it. So that's one of the principles of intuitive eating that I love the most is really just making peace with all foods. All foods are allowed. So number two, um, my step, you know, is I talked about this in one of my other videos in the um, five-day live training series, which can be found in the unit section of this group, by the way. I just changed that. So if you didn't get to watch the five-day live training series, I highly, highly suggest that you go back and look at that at the unit section in this group. Um, but gentle nutrition, I think, is the fifth day, so day five. But gentle nutrition and, and getting satiating, loving nourishment throughout your day is step number two. It is so crucial for you to keep eating and keep your body satisfied and keep your body truly, like, full and working through all of the nutrients and the vitamins and the minerals that you're giving it throughout the day so that you don't get so super hungry later on or you're, you're not starving by the end of the day or by 4 p.m. when you're getting ready to go to work or I'm sorry when you're getting ready to leave work and go back home and all you can think about is food and how much you want it and so you go to the grocery store and then you just like pile everything in your car and then you start eating in the car and then you're like 12 bags of chips later and you realize what you just did, no, okay? This happened to me, so I can like talk about it freely because this was my life for too long. And I can promise you, it can change. You're not alone. I'm here, I know, I know what I'm talking about. And gentle nutrition and full nourishment throughout your day is so, 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 so important. And also, it is really important to think about crowding in to crowd out, which means you're actually crowding out some of the junk food and adding in, adding in fruits and adding in more vegetables, adding in more fiber-fueled carbohydrates to your diet every single day so that you can stay satiated. You're not just eating donuts every day, right? Because that wouldn't really keep you full. That wouldn't really give your body what it needs. Your body would still be hungry after that, even though you might be full in a moment. And two hours later, after just eating five donuts, your body's going to want something else. It's going to want some greens. It's going to want some vitamins. It's going to want some vitamin C and, and oranges and maybe something else. So you're going to keep wanting more if you don't give yourself nourishing meals. So make sure that you remember that too. And number three is feeling, um, is being interconnected with the way you want to feel. So Getting in touch with how you feel is super important. Step one out of this two-step process and step number three. And then getting in touch with how you want to feel at the end of the meal. So it's super crucial to first acknowledge your feelings. Then maybe write them down, check in, do a little body check. Then make choices throughout your day that allow for those feelings to actually happen to you. So if you want to feel good and you want to feel full and you want to feel satiated and you also want to feel like you're making healthy choices to, to support yourself throughout the day, make choices that are going to support that with your food and with your other things that are happening outside of your food, right? Your primary food, which I like to call it, your primary food is your relationships, the way you communicate with your friends and your family and your loved ones. Your home environment, if your home is messy and it's crazy and you don't know, you know, which way is up, then that's going to affect you. That's going to affect your day. That's going to affect your life. That's going to affect how you feel. So maybe make a choice 
every day to clean your space or every night before you go to sleep to clean your desk and clean your area and clean your room or make your bed every morning just to set the tone of how you want to feel. These are all little tiny choices that we can make throughout our day to create the best possible version of ourselves and have wonderful days every day. Yeah? So, and, and, and this could also mean making the choice to not diet, which is step number one. So making the choice for no restriction, not restricting yourself, um, you know, anything really, not restricting any kind of sugar, any kind of bread or any kind of white flour or white, you know, the, those things are, are very, those are traditional based um, principles that maybe people were taught in the 80s, in the 70s, in the 60s, but honestly, they always fail because when we think again when we're going back to our brain when we think about things that we're not allowing ourselves all our brain wants to think about is the thing that we're not allowing ourselves I mean you know it's like the example of don't think about the elephant in the room don't think about it don't think about the elephant in the room don't think about it don't think about it like what are you thinking about right now the elephant in the room right so it's the exact same principle so step number four is becoming mindful, becoming a mindful eater, becoming a mindful um, person throughout your day. This one was really hard for me to realize when I was going through my, my struggles was because I like was the queen and I'm kid you not like the friggin queen of denial. <laughs> I wanted to pretend like nothing was wrong. I wanted to pretend like I had it all figured out, like I was totally happy and everything was fine. I denied, 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 denied. So my step number four for you is to not deny. If, if something is wrong, notice it. Write it down. You don't, maybe if it's too scary, if it's too soon right now to like voice it and talk about it, which I would highly suggest doing, but if it's too scary to do that right now, Write it in a journal just for you, just for your eyes only. It really, 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 really helps. And if you're present in your life and you're mindful in your in your choices throughout your day, you're, you're caretaking to your body. You're doing things that your body really wants, like taking long walks, maybe going on a, a nature walk or a nature hike with your friends and loved ones, maybe practicing some yoga, maybe just five minutes of yoga every day just to getting in the groove of doing things that truly feed your soul and feed your body with what it really is needing and longing for. It allows you to also trust your body and trust yourself, which is super crucial. That's also like step 4.5, just trusting your body and trusting yourself and honoring yourself. First, the first thing to do that and the first step in order to do that is mindfulness. It's saying, it's keeping mindful with how you're feeling and staying mindful in your meals throughout your day um, and honoring your body. It will, it will open up so many incredible things for you. So step number five is simply, it's another intuitive eating principle. It's really getting in touch with your hunger and what that feels like and what the grumble in your tummy feels like, what maybe if you get shaky, if you have a little bit of hypoglycemia, maybe that's what that feels like. What does hunger really feel like in your unique body? Because it is different for every single body. So whatever you read online may not be applicable to you. And whatever your friend, you know, Tracy is dealing with may not be applicable to you. So get in touch with your body, your unique biochemistry, and what does hunger feel like for you? And, no, and notice that and know that feeling. And then... On the contrary, what does fullness feel like for you? When when do you feel full? When do you feel satisfied? Maybe you're eating a meal and you realize halfway through the meal that you don't really actually want anymore. That's okay. It's totally okay and awesome to leave half of what you're eating on the plate just because you're recognizing your own fullness cues. You're able to see it, notice it, feel it, and then say to yourself or yeah, say to yourself into your plate, I'm full. I'm done. I can, I can be finished with this meal and I'll save the rest for later. Or maybe, you know, I'll save the rest and then eat it in an hour. That happens too and that's totally fine. But what's important here is to get extremely, extremely confident in what those two feelings feel like. What does hunger feel like for you and what does fullness feel like for you? So that you know next time 
that you eat a meal, how hungry you are, how much you can eat, and how much you want to eat, and then how much you need to eat to actually satiate you and satiate your body. So then number six is super simple, and it sounds like really obvious, but it's actually really hard for a lot of us. Um, it's just to slow the F down. <laughs> it's slowing down. Slow down throughout your day. Slow down throughout your meals. Give yourself about 30 minutes through for every meal. I mean, I know we are all crazy busy and we have crazy busy lives, but listen, if you don't slow down, you're always going to be on the run and you're always going to be having, having um, extra cortisol pumping through your body because you're stressed, okay? Being super busy all the time and having this like obsession with doing a million things and having to get this place and go to this place and get this done and get that done. And it's just, I mean, it is so stress inducing. Even just saying it is stress inducing. I feel like my levels of cortisol are just going up just by saying that. So my tip to you is to slow down. <laughs> okay. Your body also needs a chance to recognize its fullness. And this is, a, this is a fact. It takes your body and your digestive system 20 minutes to realize that it's full. To realize, even recognize like, oh, whoa, you're feeding me. Like, you're putting a ton of food into my body. I have to work really hard to get through it and to eliminate all of the toxins and to get through the nutrients and to store this and to store that there. And it takes 20 minutes for that to happen. So give yourself, give your body a break by allowing yourself a lot, at least 30 minutes for every meal. Notice what happens if you do that. I guarantee you, you will notice your fullness like that much quicker, like so much quicker. And you'll realize, oh, I don't need like four pieces of pizza anymore. I really only, I'm really good with like one. Or, you know, maybe a piece of pizza and a salad to pair it with something that's nutritious and healthy. And, you know, I'm not saying pizza's not healthy, too. Like, there's cheese. There's some vitamins in there. There's tomato sauce. It's delicious. But I always like to pair my um, simple carbs with something that's a little bit more nutrient-dense. That's just a tip that I do. It doesn't have to be you. But finally is tip number seven is find a decreased stress response that you can implement and practice daily. This could be anything. It doesn't have to be like meditate for 20 minutes. It literally can be anything. It can be walking without any kind of technology device, like no cell phone, um, walking and being mindful throughout your walk, taking note and maybe writing in a gratitude journal, three things that you're grateful for, making note of what you want to, what your intentions are throughout the day, what you would like to accomplish throughout your day, writing out um, three things that you'd like to get accomplished throughout your day or three goals that you have. That's a mindfulness activity. Something else that's really good is taking a bath, taking a hot shower, doing something that's just for you that calms your mind, calms your body, and calms your spirit. Okay, this is super, super important to decrease and eliminate emotional eating and eliminate binge eating and eliminate um, overeating because once you're in a decreased stress response, your body doesn't like immediately want to fill it up with something and it doesn't want to fill the void. It wants to just be. And we need to learn how to just be as a, as a people, don't you think? A little bit more. I think just being is a lot harder than, than we may think, or than, than it even sounds. This could, this could also be, you know, doing some yoga, stretching out your body, giving your body a little bit of a break from just like sitting in a chair all day, doing something that you know calms your mind and calms your body. It's, this will seriously give you so many results, not just in eliminating binge eating, but also in just preparing yourself for the day and giving your feeding your soul with important, important movement, joyful movement. Um, a small meditation practice can go a long way. So that's it for me. Those are my seven tips. 
Um, I hope this was helpful. Again, please let me know if you would like um, to catch the replay. If you are, are watching the replay, just hashtag replay so I know that you watched this and that you are getting things, that you are getting something out of it. If you are here, oh, Joanne, yes, uh, the replay will be up right after this. I just saw you posted that. Hello. So, yes, you will be able to watch this um, on Instagram. I'm going to put it on IGTV, and it's also here in this lovely group. So that's it. I hope you think, I hope you thought this was helpful. Let me know in the comments below which tip resonated with you most. I would love to hear. And um, yeah, that's it for me. I hope you have a beautiful Thursday and I'll catch you on the inside.